Hi, this is the Behringer Oscillator Module 1004, which is part of the UP2500 series. It took a long time for this module to arrive. I actually pre-ordered it in January. Now we have June and it's now finally here. So let's have a look at its general outline, its features and hear some sounds. Let's start with this bottom row of inputs and outputs. The first input is the keyboard CV input, which is one volt per octave standard, so you can feed either your keyboard CV or a CV that comes from a sequencer or anything similar into this input. Then we have two frequency modulation inputs, which are both exponential, and they both have an attenuator. And if you tune them to the fully clockwise position, you again receive one volt per octave tracking. So in total, you have three CV inputs, which are all exponential and they are summed together internally and all act on the pitch or the frequency of this oscillator. Next is the pulse width modulation input, which goes to this attenuator, so you can tune the amount of modulation on the pulse waveform. And this is internally summed together with the manual pulse width control, which is the upper knob here. Finally, we have the two outputs, which are both identical, so you cannot pick more than one waveform at a time out of this oscillator module. So to choose which waveform you receive at these outputs, you have five three position switches, which in the middle position just disconnect their respective waveform from the output. In the left position, they output the normal waveform and in the right position, they output the inverted waveform. And this gives you an incredible amount of different combinations and in total, it's uh, 3 to the power of 5 different waveforms, which amounts to 243 different combinations. And this excludes the pulse width modulation. If you include this in this calculation, you receive an uncountable number of different wave shapes that this oscillator can generate. Next is the range selector, which allows you to set this oscillator to an LFO mode when you set it to low or to a VCO mode, which um, operates in the audio range if you set it to high. We have an enable switch. If we set this to off, the outputs are switched off. And if we set it to on, which is confirmed by this LED, we receive the selected waveforms or the combination of them at the two outputs. And finally we have the manual frequency selection which is distributed into a coarse frequency tuner which allows us to set a range within eight octaves and then we have a fine tune which goes on top of this coarse frequency tuner. So let's switch to the single waveforms and also look to some of um, the possible combinations of waveform outputs. So we don't hear any sound now and we also see no wave on the oscilloscope because we selected no waveform to be routed to the outputs. 
Another common um, mistake is to just uh, forget to switch the module on. So we do this and now we start with the normal sine wave. And this gives us a nice and clean sine wave output. This is the inverted form. We do not hear or see any difference here. And um, we will see uh, how this affects the output if we mix more than one waveform together. Next is the triangle wave. Again, this is a nice and clean waveform. And this is the inverted one. And uh, again, we see no difference to the normal one. Next is the square wave. Um, we see no result on the scope because the normal square wave outputs only negative voltages. So I have to adjust the trigger and now we see the result. And this is also a nice and clean square wave signal. Um, it's uh, fixed to 50% duty cycle, so an even square. The inverted form outputs only positive voltages, so I again have to adjust the trigger of the scope. So here we can spot a difference uh, between the normal and the inverted waveform output. Next is the saw wave, and again this outputs only negative voltages for the normal setting. And we see it's a nice and clean sawtooth signal. The inverted waveform now is flipped um, uh, horizontally and now it outputs only positive voltages. So finally we have the pulse wave and again for the normal selection it outputs only negative voltages and we can now adjust the pulse width using this pulse width knob. And the inverted wave outputs only positive voltages. The pulse width range is between 5% and 95% of duty cycle. We can also modulate the pulse width using an LFO or any other modulation signal. I just plug an LFO into um, the pulse width modulation input and increase its modulation amount. The LFO signal is a sine wave now and uh, we can set the offset using um, the manual pulse with control. It starts to get really interesting if we mix more than one wave into the output. So let's start with the sine wave and add the triangle wave to this. This looks a bit strange, um, but the triangle wave is shifted by 180 degrees in phase, so it basically cancels out the sine wave. And if we choose the inverted setting, we receive a much clearer result. And this is now a mix somewhere in between a sine and a triangle wave. So let's add the square wave to the mix. This produces some interesting kinks on the top and the bottom peaks and adds a significant amount of harmonics and overtones. We mix the saw wave into um, the result also gives very interesting shapes. And now finally we also add the pulse wave. <laughs> 
this really gives us an incredible amount of different output waveforms and harmonics. And if we set the oscillator to LFO mode, we can use its output as a very interesting modulation signal. So let's just feed it into the CV input of a filter and use a second VCO as input into this um, filter. And I'm now just using the multi-mode uh, filter, which is also part of the uh, ARP2500 series. So we now see that the oscillator outputs a slow sine wave as I selected uh, the sine wave as the only output and we have set it to LFO um, range. And it goes to the frequency, uh, to the cutoff frequency of this filter. Now let's increase its amount. And now we can, of course, add other waveforms to this modulation. Let's have a look at the frequency modulation and I chose an audio range signal which goes into frequency modulation input number one and uh, let's see how this um, acts on the result. So this also gives us very interesting results. Last but not least, we can of course play this oscillator as a normal VCO using a keyboard or a sequencer CV input. Yeah, that was a quick uh, review of the general outline and the features of this oscillator module. Apart from that, um, the build quality is okay. There is nothing too wobbly. However, none of the elements is bolted to the front plate, but it doesn't really matter here. I personally don't like um, the jacks, which are the same that uh, Behringer also uses in the System 100 or in, I think, most of their other gear. Um, but especially considered the price of this module, they are perfectly okay. I personally like the design of these modules, especially these colored knobs um, are an eye catcher in, uh, in the rack and also the spacing between the elements is very good, nothing too fiddly. A large amount of these credits should go to the original inventors, so to ARP Industries. However, um, also Behringer did a great job in reproducing these modules for the Eurorack, scaling them down, and I guess they also had to do some uh, adjustments to the original circuits to make them work with modern electronic components. You can listen to this oscillator in a quick impro that I recorded with it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.